demands the immediate overall of the honorary <coughs> and the acting of public policy to ensure that openness and transparency of all of these payments are made, they are fair and they are competitive. And Mr Mayor, Wirral will never shake off its image of the past fully until we can prove to the public that we truly have changed. So I'd say to the Liberal <coughs> Council, I would let them just gather on some of your recent trophies, Phil. And until you can wipe clean the slate completely for this council and satisfy rural residents that all is open, clear and fair in the corridors of this town hall. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your support and statements of our board. Every day we want to see Councillor Gilchrist, who is uh, Sonny Councillor Kelly, who seconded the Little Dove Cast and others. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. What we're trying to do, even at this late stage, is to introduce an element, I think, of fairness uh, into all of this. The, the Labour group were successful uh, in using what I think Councillor Harry Smith described as its block post to increase the uh, uh, salary for the Chief Executive position. And it now seems that if we believe that the started salary will be in the middle of the range rather than at the bottom. What concerns us is that there seems to be an acceptance within the Labour group, if not elsewhere, that the salary will automatically rise each year by 5,000 pounds until it reaches the top. Neither the salary nor the increments are unsubstantial sums of money, and members of the council, staff and the public are entitled to ask whether we are in fact getting value for money. All the council officers looking at these increases are entitled to ask whether the pressure that they are facing in pay are being fairly matched by those at the top particularly when the ratio from the lowest paid to the top is 11 times greater. That means that for every £100 someone earning the living wage in the borough uh, gets, the chief executive will get £1,100. In researching some of the items, Mr Mayor, I was drawn to Will Hutton's report on fair pay in the public sector, which was published back in March 2011. The report makes clear that public bodies should take steps to ensure they prevent rewarding failure. This danger exists with automatic increments. Button also suggested that there should be meaningful, specific and verifiable explanations produced for pay multiples and changes. Do any of us here believe we've received such explanations? Aside from the consultants telling us that that's what we needed to do. Just in passing, referring to uh, Leslie Rennie, Will Hutton also looked at using benchmark in and, and considered the Prime Minister's salary as a benchmark, but rejected that entirely as an arbitrary benchmark because the Prime Minister, we know, only takes a small portion of what he's entitled to, notwithstanding also the desire of residents in central London. The Leader of the Council referred to the uh, be a very incremental increase for uh, one year. Well, obviously, uh, no one's going to get an increment after one month. And then he mentions the established performance appraisal mechanism. What he doesn't mention is that there's no link between the increments and the performance. There isn't. Coming back to Jeff's point, it's my understanding that should the amendment be passed, the revised offer would actually be made to Mr. Robinson, making clear that, income, that uh, incremental uh, rises would be linked to success. And what message would it actually say? If he was to turn around and say no, I don't believe that I can uh, succeed uh, in these circumstances. Mr. Mayor, I call on the council to accept the amendment. Okay, thank you very much, Stuart, for keeping it to time. We now call on the second of the original recommendation, which in this case is Councillor Anne Black. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to start with the honorary and the acting honorary and the shortlist 
gone to interview. Um, and with regard to the performance appraisal, performance appraisal, as you all know, anybody who's undertakes performance appraisal, is always linked to the objectives which are set for you. And at the end of the year, your performance is appraised against those key objectives. That's how it works in all organisations, and that's how it will work here. And after the Chief Executive has been post for a year and has had those objectives assessed uh, at his performance appraisal, a decision will be made about uh, raising his salary. Mr. Mer Eric Robinson has a track record that we're keen to learn and benefit from. He's a highly skilled individual with skills and knowledge which we want to benefit from. I urge all council to agree the cabinet recommendation and to reject both of these silly <coughs> amendments. Yeah. 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 Okay, and now call on Councillor Davis, who has the right to reply and um, help to seven minutes. Yeah, I won't take that long, Mr. Mayor. I mean, first of all, um, uh, you know, I, I want to just uh, make it clear, you know, you, you need to hold your hands up when things were got wrong, and I do take Jeff's point, the procedural point, that this should have been agreed by the employment people in panel um, when we made the decision. And I hold on to say that was an error for which I apologise. You know, I think you need to be big enough in this job to admit that. So, um, you yeah, know, I'll do that. However, we are where we are. We brought, we brought the, um, the recommendation forward from, from Cabinet um, this evening. But what, what I would say it is, you know, um, certainly, you know, certainly from my point of view, this is a, 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 an amount of money that. I certainly could only dream of, but I, I, I was doing some comparisons um, with, in terms of chief exec salaries, with, with other with other professions. Now, you know, um, Leslie really talks about this is way above the prime minister's salary. Well, what is it? Why does the government then endorse the fact that I understand head teachers of academies are now earning two hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year? Now, why, why, why does she not criticise that kind of? <laughs> The government seems to, to endorse, but opposes uh, what I think is, is a reasonable sample for a chief exec's job, particularly given the comparators. Uh, and we all, you know, one of the things that we know will be a key priority for chief exec was to uh, help us achieve our, um, our savings target, 70 million over the next three years. So I, I, th I think it is, in the circumstances, a reasonable um, investment. I, I mean, I think. Um, uh, the issue about uh, honoraria and acting up. Um, I mean, I do believe that we're, we are operating those policies fairly, but I will undertake, uh, give the, the Leader of the Opposition a, a, an undertaking, but as, as part of the work of the Employment Appointments Panel and looking at um, the, um, the pay policy for next year, we'll put all of those issues and any more uh, under the microscope to make sure that we are absolutely. Uh, doing things in a fair, open, and transparent way. I'll give the leader of the opposition that that uh, undertaking. I, I would just like also though, to point out um, that uh, the the agency staff bill. You know, we are uh, working really hard to drive that down, and I'm I'm pleased to report to council that over the last, um, well, certainly in the, the spend between 2012, 13, and 13, 14, we've reduced our agency staff bill by 500,000 we will continue to bear down on, on that on that cost. Um, I, I think it's very sad that, that you know Leslie has to make some pretty cheap political points really about us you know winning the most improved council of all that would hope that you know we wouldn't be as churlish and, and, and just celebrate the fact that we have you know achieved that um, that uh, recognition uh, not not by not by you know any uh, subjective way, but by a, a group of outside experts from most of the private sector. I think it's a shame she has to yeah. bring the debate yeah. 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 Maybe she'll, in a quiet moment, she, yeah. she may reflect on the wisdom of, of, making, yeah. Yeah. of making those comments. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, with, with, those, um, with those comments, uh, I, I'm going to move our recommendation and, and uh, uh, sorry, final point, um, final point, uh, Stuart Kelly's point about the increments. Um, it is absolutely the case that the income will be dependent on the performance appraisal um, process. Um, the, the two are very closely linked, and the, the, the income will not be awarded if the performance appraisal process is, is, not, um, is not satisfactory. So I want to give Stuart back to that assurance because I, I think there was a doubt there. But for me, the, 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 the 
two, the two processes are very clearly linked. You need to be able to satisfy um, our, us as a council that he is achieving the priorities and objectives that we can set for him. So I'd just like to set the record straight on that. So, Mr. Mayor, I'll move the cabinet recommendation and propose that we, uh, that we reject the two amendments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we now move to the vote. Voting is on the two amendments. Firstly, we're going to vote on the Conservative uh, amendments. Bye. 
just to recap, those for 26, those against 36, with one abstention. So that amendment is clearly lost. Do we need to move votes on the base, base recommendation? All those in favour of the standing recommendation, please show. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Lord, there's one 
hadden dit in de computer veel beter dan jaren ago. Mr. Mayor, I was wrong and hard about whether to submit this comment. I'm not naming the individual concerned. I raise the issue of cabinet and members listen to the point. Members and officers present didn't raise concerns about what I said at cabinet, but I do wish to underline the point that's made in the paragraph about my view about the way in which a particular officer dealt with matters. There were other members of the council present, Mr. Mayor, as were some members of the public and former councillors. I wish to offer in my comment some advice to that particular officer, an advice that I hope will be taken in general terms by all officers undertaking consultations. In this case, it was about the Lindale. I'm not going into the merits of that, but that has been well rehearsed in this chamber and many scrutiny meetings. What I've raised is the, the tone and manner in which comments were heard by the members of the public and the way they were interpreted by those parents who were concerned about the educational needs of their children. And it has pained me to bring it this far, but I think this is the proper form for that comment to be made, for it to be noted properly and for it to be passed on. I'll leave it at that, Mr. Mayor, because I don't wish to cause further embarrassment, but I think it's necessary to do this. Okay, I presume this will not be noted for me to form a second then, you've got to form a second then. You've only seconded, Mr. Mayor. I could clearly, at the will of the, the, the Council, whether you wish to accept to note this or, or, or not. I don't know what the power of noting something means. It, it seems to me, having not been at the meeting, it could be a judgmental issue. And if you were at the meeting, it's going to be very difficult for elected members to vote on something they have to know or they can not job. So I'll ask, I'll just leave it open to the authority of, you know. Sorry, just genuinely asking a question. This, this is an account of minutes of the discussion that went on at this meeting. Um, and that's all I think the council's being asked to note tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to see how we can seek to change that because this is a, a record of the discussion. And I think if there's an opinion uh, Councillor Gilchrist is expressing. Um, I, I don't see how that can be, um, you know, can be sort of shoehorned into what is just, a, I, I think, a, a reasonably accurate account of the discussion that went on um, that, that evening at Cabinet. Uh, so I'd be looking to uh, for a solicitor here for some advice on, on, on how we can deal with Councillor Gilchrist's point. Okay. Yeah. Sir, would you like to respond? Thank you, Chair. In essence, this is a comment that, uh, as I understand, the Council of is, is asking the Council to, to note, um, which is relevant to the you know, minutes of one to eight um, in your papers. It's not attempting to change or amend the minutes itself, but rather a uh, comment being made in relation to it, which the Council has been asked to note. The Council can decide whether to agree to do that, or obviously can um, decide if I forget that particular question. Just, just to be clear, Mr. Black. Um, and um, if I may, clearly constitutionally we feel it's allowed to do that. But all, I'm, all I'm seeing here is that Phil is asking for the council to make sure that he could share meetings with the public and have the appropriate level of training and the right skills, which has a learning organisation more than the So I can't see what the issue is about, to be honest. It seems reasonable. I, I, I really find quite, you know, as chair of the meeting, it's very difficult for elected members to be asked to vote on something that has clearly uh, a judgmental opinion about the behaviour of the chair, and then basing a, a further comment that this person needs advice. I do wish perhaps this could have come in a lot earlier than being on our seats when we come in tonight. Uh, it, it, I'm, I'm speaking council of the if you don't mind. Um, I'm not being brusque, I mean, and that's, that might be a judgment that you have made of me, uh, Councillor Green, and that's where there lies some difficulty for me. If you went to the meeting, a bit like the, what you were talking about, for about procedure or being right and correct, are elected members allowed to vote on something they have little or no knowledge of uh, at late notice? I think this, the safest thing would be maybe not to note it, but take on board as people involved in, in that particular issue, take on board Councillor Gilchrist's comments. I think that would be the safest route for all, if that would be okay for you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 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 Thank you,
you, Mr. Mayor. I'm listening to the advice. Can I say that the, doc, the note was given to Mr. Torre during last week, and I suggested in my note it could be circulated. I'm sorry it didn't arrive on the chair today. I joined the day I pursued several times with my Mrs. Craney in the office to make sure it did arrive in members. I appreciate your saying that it's a matter of interpretation. I can only say that Councillor Hayes and other people were present at that meeting and they felt the same way. Now you may not, some members may not wish to accept my word, but I wouldn't have brought it here at this stage unless I'm sure that the point needs to be reinforced in the big Okay, again, if, if members are okay to, to agree with my form, there is some criticism of the chairman of the meeting within the minutes. I've read the minutes, so there is some criticism of the chairman of the meeting. I'm sure with goodwill around for everyone in the authority, we would all like all our officers or all our elected members to have a supreme amount of skills. Um, having said that, we did have a vote against training our officers and training and uh, put training uh, put to put you for training. So you can't always have our cake and eat it. Uh, that's just a side comment. My view is I've got to move a proposal if someone prepared to set uh, someone move a proposal that we do not note this. Uh, but, but take on board comments made. I'll move out, sir. Is anyone seconding that? Second. Okay. Uh, do you want to go to a vote or you have to? I will accept that. I will accept that understanding. We may read different things into that, Mr. Mayor, but I believe the point has been made and I have accepted it. Okay. It's been accepted by the way, which is very kind of you, Council Builders. Thank you. Can we move progress then and accept those minutes? Agreed. Is agree? Yeah. Okay. Right. Am I, am I now finished with item 8? I have not been. We've now got well, members' questions. My notification has been given for a question by Councillor Stuart Kelly to Councillor Phil Davis and Councillor Phil Davis to Councillor Tony Smith. So, Councillor Kelly, can you ask your question? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Questions have given a professional to the leader. Uh, the leader of the council should be aware that Enterprise Solutions is likely to be dissolved under Section 1000 of the Companies Act 513 of April. You should also be aware that the reports of Grant Thornton to the Special Office of this meeting on the April of Terminal recommended that the council should consider whether they can or should call back the business investment grants given by Enterprise Solutions trading as well on this. To the applicants identified in their reports as big six. We are still awaiting the Department of Business, Innovation and Skills and calls into these matters and I understand moves to call back for the money are delayed whilst we wait. Can I ask the leader what instructions he has given to officers to ensure the Middle Council and Wells taxpayers' interests in this matter are being protected and whether we, he will ensure that the application to wind up enterprise solutions is proposed? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to Councillor Kelly for the advance notice of this question. Uh, the response is as follows. Council officers are, are discussing matters with um, department communities and local government and business, business innovation and skills with regards to ISUS, which is the Intensive Startup Service. And whilst in principle the Council is agreeable to the cessation of any action to dissolve Enterprise Solutions Limited, it is appropriate that both DCLG and BICS also agrees to this course of action, given that they hold key evidence in respect of ISIS and the conduct of Enterprise Solutions Limited. And, and therefore, the council officers will be writing to Companies House uh, accordingly, and obviously keep the council advised of any further developments on this matter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you for that response. We now have a question from Councillor Gilchrist to Councillor Tony Smith. Can you ask your question, Councillor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In May 2014 and January 2015, Ofsted carried out inspections of two children's centre groups in Wirral. Both groups had dedicated staff teams, but Wirral as an authority received judgments rating the targeting and following of services as inadequate. What has been learned from these reports and what is being done to remedy the issues identified? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the notification, Councillor Douglas. Um, my response is that um, the key issues in the most recent inspection in Rural West 
relate to areas such as how many vulnerable children are consistently accessing the service, how data is used to support more focused activity, and the leadership, management, and governance of the service. I think it's important to note that the outset inspection of the West World Children's Centre group highlights some key strengths that are significant improvements to the previous inspection of Birkenhead Children's Centre group. And notably, these are the strategic direction is improving and senior leaders have communicated the reasons for change well. Improvements in safeguarding arrangements from being described as poor within the Birkenhead Health Inspection is now identified as a strength in the West World Inspection. Standards of practice and management oversight of individual casework have been implemented well. And the standards of early education and health being, being delivered were also a strength. However, Ensuring children and families in our communities get the services they need remains our priority. And while often tell us that critical areas such as safeguarding, management of individual casework, and early education have strengths, what we cannot yet do is to demonstrate the effectiveness of services or that the children and families who need our services the most are using them. Our advisory boards, which provide leadership and governance for our children's centres, have already been through a period of development. What we need to do now is to ensure that the right support is in place to enable them to be as effective as they can be to offer challenge and scrutiny to the centres to make sure they improve. Can I just add some of my own sort of individual comments um, on, on that? Um, recently, um, children's centres provision, as set out by the government guidance to the local authorities in two, 2013 and 14, um, stated, and I think this is right, that the core purpose should be now to improve outcomes for children and families with a particular focus on the most disadvantaged families in order to reduce inequalities uh, in child development and school readiness. And also, the government said, the local authority needs to focus on the 20 or 30 percent most disadvantaged children and their families. And this means families where no one is at work or where families are on low incomes, are living in poor housing, are, are predicted to have poorer health outcomes, educationally may not achieve the same as their peers, and are more likely to require staff.